What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands 2 Top 10 and this time we're taking a look at the Top 10 Item Farming Spots. These are places in the game where you can score the best loot no matter what playthrough you're on. So let's just jump right into it. Here we are, starting with number 10. Good enough to be on the list, but not that good. At number 10, the fridge. While legendary drops for this map aren't the most flashy on the list, they're still solid weapons that, with the right build, can be used to great effect. The Sledge's shotgun is a solid acquisition for normal and true vault hunter mode, and the gub can be used to great effect at the destruct peak. The gunnerang can be used on certain axe builds to destroy things, but that's a little more nuanced. Number nine, this better be good! And number nine, the entrance to the Vault of the Warrior. So this farm is pretty boring compared to most of the others on the list, but it's undoubtedly the fastest of the bunch as well. Regardless of playthrough, this chest can be opened over and over simply by going into the Vault of the Warrior, then exiting back out to Heroes Pass. Once your game finishes saving there, you can now save and quit, and you will respawn just a few steps away from this chest. This is great for farming a Tapnia, aka Poor Man's Norfleet, Legendary Loot, and occasionally even a Pearl Ascent. This would be higher up on the list, but the run to the vault door and the repetitive nature of this farm means that a lot of people won't even bother with this. Eight! Eight's a good number! Strong, solid number, you know what I mean? Coming in at number eight is Frostburn Canyon, which is one of my favorite maps in the game. Well, now that I know which way is which. When the game first came out, this map confused me and I would end up getting lost trying to find my way to certain enemies. But once you know the farming route that I'm showing you now, you can get tubby slash chubby enemies, the last go, hellfire, the neogenator shield, which is highly underrated by the way, midgets, multiple red chests, and the pyrophobia rocket launcher, all while quickly and easily traversing the map with minimal resistance. Now, to get Scorch and Incinerator Clayton, you will need to complete the Firehawk missions, and to get Spyco, who drops the Neogenator, you'll need to complete Monster Mash Part 3, which is a quest line from Dr. Zed. So bear in mind, there is a little bit of prep work before you can fully maximize this farm. Oh god, what was that movie again? The one with Brad Pitt, you know, uh, what's in the box? What's in the box? Coming in at number 7, Arid Nexus Badlands, which is another one of my favorite destinations in the game. Not only do you get a chance to fight Saturn for a chance at the Hive or an Invader, but there are tons of chances to get tubby enemies in multiple zones on this map. You also have a chance to get midgets from the chests around Saturn. I also love grinding out XP here on each of my playthroughs, fighting rabbits, badasses, and tubby or chubby enemies to gain levels quickly with minimal effort. In addition, there are numerous chests throughout this map that are easy to grab, and you can fight Bonehead for arguably one of the better unique SMGs in the game, the Bone Shredder. Number six, because screw the top five. At number six, Three Horns Divide. Now this is one of those farms where there's not much in the way of loot, but the loot is so good that this farm deserves a spot on the list. Maybe even higher, but I digress. Now to maximize this farm, you will need to have completed the Hunting the Firehawk story mission, then go to Sanctuary and accept the In Memoriam quest from Lilith, and now you can farm Bull. Along the way, there are three different spots where Savage League can spawn. If you start from Three Horns Fast Travel, you can find Savage Lee at one of two spots immediately behind where you spawn in. Just look for the red dots on the map right as you arrive. If you see them, then he's there and he's aggroed the Bully Mongs. Go kill him and you'll still be able to get a second spawn of him at his normal spot in the Marrow Field, near where you meet Corporal Reese during the story mission to unlock Sanctuary. So all in all, this is an extremely fast farm that can net you two of the most powerful items in the game, and you can get both before you even hit level 12 in normal mode. I know five ways to kill a guy with a sign, Gary. Five! Coming in at number five is the Bunker. Ah oh, yes, the Bunker. My adventures with him are well documented, but he makes the list for good reason. Sure, the run up the hill to him is no picnic, but in theory, you can run all the way up the hill without killing a single enemy, so there's that. So the bunker can drop two very solid items, the sham shield and the bitch SMG. Both are excellent on any difficulty and for pretty much any character, dependent on the situation, of course. Now, in addition to those two items, bunker is notorious for dropping lots of other legendary and on ultimate mode, pearlescent items. Regardless of your playthrough, Bunker's Loot Explosion is generally one of the best in the game, giving you plenty of blue and purple items, including shields and occasionally a nice Jacob's Quad. You can also pretty easily max out your money by farming Bunker, as anybody who watched my Hunt 2019 Sham Farm can attest. Moving on to number four! 
coming in at number four, Dragon's Keep. Now, most people know that the Handsome Sorcerer can drop pretty much the same loot pool as the Warrior, including plenty of money in Iridium. The Flacker, the Impaler Shield, the Conference Call, the Volcano, and the Leech Grenade Mod, but you can also drop the Lightning Bolt, Fireball, Magic Missile, Firestorm, and Chain Lightning. He also seems to have a decent chance to drop other random legendary items as well, including one time we got a B-Shield from him on normal mode of all things. In addition, this map has five red chests that you can farm with minimal resistance if you're fast and elusive for the excellent Tiny Tina DLC class mods, which are widely considered some of the best class mods in the game. There's also the Sacrifice Altar if you want to dump some old loot for a chance at badass sorcerers, tubby skeletons, or maybe even a very rare chance at a legendary. And now we're down to number three. Number three, the dust. Now the dust is unquestionably one of the most fun maps in the game, but in addition to being a fun place to drive around and explore, it also offers quite a bit of loot. Starting with the Gwen's head, which can be found in a number of spots on this map just by opening up a box. Then there's the tubby farm behind Ellie's garage. There's also the Hammer Buster from McNally once you start the Bane quest. The Black Queen sometimes resides near the back of the map and she can drop the Nukem Rocket Launcher. The Clan War quest line culminates here where you can farm the Zaffords and the Hodunks for Maggie and a Slaga. See Jolt's Dude's Guide to Farming Both by clicking the link down in the description below. And of course, Mobley and Gettle who can drop the Lyuda and the Farouk. So all in all, this map has the largest pool of legendary items with dedicated loot sources of any map in the game. Coming in at number two, the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve. The preserve, when combined with Tannis' quest, Doctor's Orders, is one of the most lucrative farms in the game. But the catch is you're going to need the Natural Selection Annex to maximize this farm. Most people have this unlocked, but for anybody who doesn't, feel free to look for help down in the comment section below, as anybody who does have it can help others unlock it just by going there with them. So with that said, there are several notable spots on this map, starting at the very entrance. As you spawn in around the first corner, there are dozens of stalkers who can potentially be tubby or chubby variants. There's also the sacks hanging from the mushroom looking things that when shot can occasionally spawn midget enemies. After that area, you're going to want to head immediately to the annex. Entering the annex and then exiting it before heading to the doctor's orders midget room will ensure that you spawn at that door every time, saving you a, quite a bit of a journey. When you leave the annex, hang a hard left. Here at the door, you can look for Pimon, Tumba, and potentially chubby or tubby enemies, including chubby rack, which are notoriously rare. From there, you can jump up the waterfall and fight off a few waves of enemies to open the door to the area where our midget boxes spawn. Now, this is important. Listen carefully. Do not pick up any of the mission items for doctor's orders along the way. Don't pick up any of them. Just pretend like they don't exist. Doing so will decrease the number of midgets that spawn. Now, if you do this farm before opening the door to look for Bloodwing, then the cages will remain closed, making this farm a lot easier. However, to get the last possible dedicated legendary for this area, the Skull Masher, you will have needed to have beaten this part of the story first. So, to fight Son of Mothrak for a chance at Skull Masher, just continue through to where you first fight Bloodwing. Son of Mothrak will spawn in, but use caution when killing him as he is notorious for dropping his loot through the floor. Honorable Mention! Honorable Mention goes to Southpaw's Steam and Power. Here you can get the Commerce, the Judge, Fremington's Edge, and the Dog Shotgun. You also have a chance to get the Emperor SMG from any of the four assassins, and they all have a low chance to drop some of the coolest skins in the game. And now, for the big finale, who's clocking in at number one? Finally, coming in at number one, and this one's probably no big surprise, the Marcus Mercenary Day DLC is short, easy, and offers arguably the best loot chest in the game in the Snowman Train Chest. Simply beat the story and then kill the snowman. The first time you do this and then turn in the mission to Tiny Tim, you can actually go right back down to the snowman again for another crack at the chest without even saving and quitting. But after that, it's as simple as rushing to the snowman, killing him, going up the elevator, and opening the chest for your loot. This is a great farm for the Topnia, the legendary class mods, shields, legendary items, and even pearlescence. Over the years, I've used this method to re-gear for ultimate mode many, many times. And since these chests scale in level with you, it's a good idea to unlock it early on in UVHM and just go back to it anytime you need some new on-level gear. 
So that's my top 10 item farming spots in Borderlands 2. Let me know what your favorite spot is, and if I missed a spot you think deserves to be on the list, then let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to click that like button, hit subscribe, and click the little bell icon to be notified anytime I post a new video. Also, be sure to come and check out my live stream over at twitch.tv killer6, linked down in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.